Hello all and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to heal, transform, and be inspired. We are here at Favali's Trattoria in Ramsey, New Jersey, sharing a cup of coffee with my next guest, Leah Garces. She serves as the president of Mercy for Animals, the world's largest international nonprofit focused exclusively on preventing cruelty for farmed animals. We will hear today how we can get involved and make a difference. They are doing incredible work. Leah, thank you so much for coming on Wake Up. You're doing amazing work. Oh, thanks for having me, Marcy. I'm so glad to be here. I have been a supporter for quite some time, and I just got to tell you, like, you guys are making a true difference, and the work that you're putting into this, it it's so touching. Well, it's very kind, and we couldn't do it without you, so we need all the support we can get, and we yeah. really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So let's talk about you a little bit. Okay. So have you always been an advocate for animals, always loved them? Like, let, tell us about that. Yeah, I think like most people, I grew up really loving animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in the swamps of Florida okay. and my backyard was full of ducks uh -huh. actually. And we used to watch the ducks hatch uh, their eggs. The mama ducks would come up into the flower beds and my brother, sister and I would have this front row seat to these yeah. ducks yeah. And, and they're hatching in their lives and their dramas and their passions. and it just was very obvious to me that these animals were sentient, mm -hmm. they had families, mm -hmm. they were just like us. Yeah. And I really grew up motivated to protect them. And wow. that took me on my, my, my career path ultimately. So what is your career path then? Well, I went to the University of Florida, studied zoology. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I wanted to be a vet, yeah. uh, but my mentor at the time, um, and I have great respect for vets, said to me though, Leah, I don't think you want to be a vet. Mm -hmm. You're interested in the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. Vets, you know, help animals once they're broken right. already. Right. You want to get to before that. Mm -hmm. So I went to do a master's in London and in sustainable development and really looked at how agriculture was impacting the environment. And there I stumbled upon a whole movement that was happening to wow. protect farmed animals. Yeah. When I realized the impact that our food and farming system is having on these sentient beings like those ducks mm -hmm. that I had grown to love yes. and uh, cherished as yeah. a child, I didn't look back. That is what I started doing in London for 10 years and, and then in the United States yeah. now for quite a while now. And too. you just started with Mercy for Animals. I did. I, uh, Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very excited. I'm the first female president of Mercy for Animals. I love it. Uh, I love it. Yep. Way to go. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> and I started October 2018. Uh -huh. So I'm in month seven mm -hmm. um, and loving it. It's such a wonderful job. It's an organization that has yeah. really endless potential at a time when this issue is, I think, about to explode. Mm -hmm. I think people are now ready to listen. They're they ready are ready to, to listen, yeah. absolutely. So you are a mother of three <laughs> and you have this big job <laughs> making a huge difference. So tell us moms how you do that. Um, imperfectly and with a lot of help. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a simple answer. Um, I think uh, I have a wonderful husband who is right there with me. He says his contribution to the animal rights world is freeing me up to yeah. do that. Yes. And I mean, he has his and own. And I like that. Yeah, he yeah. has his own big career too, mm -hmm. mind you. Yeah. Uh, but he really cares about this issue as well. He's vegan as well. Uh, and, and your children. Mm -hmm. Tell us their ages. Uh, five, Andrea is my little girl. She's the youngest. Uh -huh. And then nine, Asher, and 11, Ruben. Wow. Yeah. Right. I'm right in the middle of it. You are right in the <laughs> middle of it and making a, a difference globally. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> you yeah. got your plate a little full, but a little bit. good stuff. Yeah. Now, how about your children? How do they feel about animals? They love them. They yeah. really are. They get it. You know, mm -hmm. I think they really understand. Um, why I do this yeah. and why I care about it. Yeah, I think almost as children grow up, they're they like I said, they have a natural 
inclination yes. to care about animals, but yeah. you're untrained to be, right. you're given the excuses as to why this happens in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving my kids those excuses. I'm right. saying this doesn't have to be this way. Right. And we're going to change that. And even well, if it's, it's true. Yeah, it is. Right. Because when you're little, you're given food. That is what you eat. And you don't understand the impact of the, the chicken that's put in front of you or whatever it may be. And I think one of the things that we also need to work on uh, in the United States is giving better alternatives, healthier alternatives to our children. And that's something that is on the rise. Yeah, I mean, all the processed meats yes. are now listed in the same category as smoking and asbestos. They're by the WHO, the World Health Organization. Okay. So they are cancer causing, categorically recognized as such. Unbelievable. So no children should be eating hot dogs no. or processed deli meat. It just no. shouldn't They're be chicken happening. nuggets that- yeah, Those are things yes. that are not, they're full of saturated fat. Mm -hmm. And we have a big obesity problem with yes. children and it's on the rise. And yes. it's not just to do with you know uh, animal products, but it's a large part to do with animal products. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us the mission of Mercy mm -hmm. for Animals? Our mission, very simply, is we want to build a compassionate food system. Mm -hmm. One that, on the one hand, is reducing the suffering of animals that are in the system, mm -hmm. and at the same time, move towards a more plant-based world. And right. we work every day to try to achieve that. It's amazing. When we come back, we will hear more about Mercy for Animals. started to develop some mental illnesses, mm -hmm. um, mainly social anxiety and depression, uh, which is was so out of the blue for Dylan. It's so important to tell your story and where you are today and the difference that you're making. Break the stigmas associated with mental illness and addiction. You had some struggles at that time. I certainly did. Like most women and men going through divorce, it was a really trying time. Well, you found the strength. It, it was really God's plan for me. I've always been a very deeply spiritual person. Well, for me, the physical abuse started when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I knew him half my life. Yeah, yes. Once you start sharing your truth, it, there's the healing that happens through that. And it's like you can't stop talking about it. But you're rebuilding your soul yes. right now. And you're doing that through your art and your creativity. Watch Wake Up With Marcy every Saturday at 6 a.m. on WLNY 1055. Welcome back to Wake Up With Marcy. So we were talking about the mission for Mercy for Animals. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us one more time what that is? All right, well, very simply put, we're trying to build a compassionate food system where we are both reducing the suffering of animals mm -hmm. that are in factory farming, so that means improving the way that they're kept, and at the same time moving towards a plant-based world where right. they're never slaughtered at all in the first place. I think it's really hard for people to see the pictures and see the videos and think about what is really happening. Yeah. And so how do you get that out there without certain without turning someone off? Yeah, that's a really good question because mm -hmm. a lot of these images, the reaction is to just shut down. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna look at that, I yeah. can't deal with that abuse. And so we put an array of different messages out there. Some that are more asking people just to look at a cute piglet's face and say, this is someone who wants to live. Right. This is someone who wants to have a good life. Yeah. And everyone can relate to that because you have a dog or a cat and you mm -hmm. understand a pig is no different. Yeah. Categorically, no different physiologically, biologically than the dog that you love and is part of your family. Yeah. And so consider that rather than showing them the graphic photos, you right. can go in from, you know, just consider the sentient being, mm -hmm. consider the, the personality, the will, the yeah. desires and the needs of this animal. Well, it's very, I don't know that people understand this, but when the piglet is taken away, it is extremely distressing yeah. to yeah. that animal. So yeah. just imagining yourself, your yeah. baby's ripped away from you, yeah. then not understanding it, and then they're confined in these little areas. Yeah. And that's with any of the farming uh, animals. Yeah. 
and what is happening. And it, it just becomes just a business. A matter of fact, each day I go in and I'm just killing these animals and I'm leaving for the day, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's no thought mm -hmm. to, to the fact that these are living beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's spot on. Mm -hmm. I think our food and farming system has fallen to a dark place mm -hmm. that treats sentient beings like sacks of potatoes. Right. They are not. They have needs and wants. Yeah. And the example you're giving, I think a lot of people are just not really aware of the depth of the darkness yes. where it is standard practice that mother pigs, every time they're pregnant, are kept in crates so small they cannot turn around mm. the whole pregnancy. Yeah. They're kept in these crates. Yeah. Then when they give birth, they're still in the crates. Yeah. And the piglets can go in and out of the crate, mm. but she's just treated like a milk machine. Right. Then the piglets are cruelly taken away. Right. They never get to experience that family unit, mm. unit. Mm -hmm. and then she starts again. She's right. impregnated again. And she does that over and over until she's deemed useless or not profitable. And that's the same profitable. with the milking cow. And the milking cow is I the mean, same. you think, oh, well, the cow's not being killed, but it's, it's being used only, I mean, you have to think about it. They have to impregnate that cow every time yeah. so she produces milk. I think a lot of people think that cows are like eggs, like, yeah. like laying hens, where, uh -huh. oh, don't they just produce the milk? Right. No, just like us, they need to become pregnant yes. and give birth in mm -hmm. order to produce milk. Meaning it happens over and over again. Over and they over. They go through the whole pregnancy, right. their babies are taken away, and there's really good studies on the crying that happens between the mother and the calf mm. and to show the distress yeah. that happens. And it, they call for each other, they call for each other. And it's and really And that's hard. one of the things I want to talk about also, just to think about what is released within the animal's body in their system mm. with that stress. Mm -hmm. And that is going into our milk, mm -hmm. not only the, the hormones that are added and everything else that mm -hmm. is added that's not what we should be ingesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's also think about what's happening to these animals' bodies when they are in such distress, and that's any of them, and when they are killed, mm -hmm. what is released? Yeah, I think all those are very, very uh, correct um, observations. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, because the mother cow is being pushed to her, metabolic limit, mm -hmm. you have chronic sometimes mastitis, mm. which means an infection mm. of the udders. Yeah. And so there is a legally allowed limit of pus ah. allowed in our milk. Yes. And so pus is a common part of milk. And so this is all very disturbing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I know. Let's, let's move to hopeful. Well, let's move <laughs> to, to your mission yeah. and where where are you at now? What difference is it making? Yeah. Um, Mercy for Animals is a very optimistic organ. As, as an advocate, I have great hope for mm -hmm. um, the, the, the best part about this problem, if there can be a best part, is yeah. each and every one of us has a choice three mm -hmm. times a day yeah. to make a difference with our food choices. Mm -hmm. and. Therefore, it's a, it's a solvable problem. Yeah. And it just takes even the smallest efforts. So I always tell people that even if one of their meals per day mm -hmm. is choosing better for the animals, that's great. And yeah. every step is a step that animals will appreciate and the planet will appreciate. And one person can make a difference. One person can make a difference. I think that a lot of times people don't understand that, yes, one person can make a difference. Yeah. So let's talk about the work that you do mm -hmm. and how you are bringing to light what's happening in the farming industry. So one of the most important programs we do is our undercover investigative work. Mm -hmm. So we have very brave, selfless investigators that go undercover mm -hmm. into factory farms, into slaughterhouses to mm -hmm. capture images of what is happening. Yeah. And you might think, why do we have to do this? Mm -hmm. It's because it's a very closed off and secretive industry that yes. wants to remain out of sight and out of mind. But mm -hmm. our job is to shine a light on that darkness and bring it to the public mind. Right. And again, like that's difficult to see, but it's necessary that we know. Now, you said that there are some companies that are changing the idea, the protein revolution, mm -hmm. right? 
So what that exactly means. So you're changing the idea of the farming industry. Right. So when you think of a company, at the end of the day, they just care about the bottom line. They have shareholders, employees who have mortgages and kids and all those things. And a company just wants to make money. And so if we can present an alternative option to them, mm -hmm. instead of slaughtering animals, could they raise soy? Could they make their nuggets out of plants instead of chicken? Mm -hmm. This is the proposal we're now working through as, as a country, in fact. Yes. And some of these companies are taking this on board. Mm -hmm. For example, Cargill, which is one of the biggest meat producers in the country, mm -hmm. they have rebranded their meat department mm -hmm. to be a protein department. Wow. Because there's nothing that says protein has to come from slaughtered animals. In right. fact, people would probably prefer not to have their protein come from a dirty slaughterhouse from a tortured animal. Right. Absolutely. Well, when we come back, we will hear more about veganism and the choices you can make. started to develop some mental illnesses, mm -hmm. um, mainly social anxiety and depression, uh, which is was so out of the blue for Dylan. It's so important to tell your story and where you are today and the difference that you're making. Break the stigmas associated with mental illness and addiction. You had some struggles at that time. I certainly did. Like most women and men going through divorce, it was a really trying time. Well, you found the strength. It, it was really God's plan for me. I've always been a very deeply spiritual person. Well, for me, the physical abuse started when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I knew him half my life. Yeah, yes. Once you start sharing your truth, it, there's the healing that happens through that. And it's like you can't stop talking about it. But you're rebuilding your soul yes. right now. And you're doing that through your art and your creativity. Watch Wake Up With Marcy every Saturday at 6 a.m. on WLNY 1055. Welcome back to Wake Up With Marcy. So we were talking about making different choices and I wanna talk about veganism. Great, yeah. So listen, I myself would love to be vegan, but it's hard. It's hard to find the right choices. It costs a lot of money. If you eat out a lot, I mean, what are our choices? Yeah, I think, first of all, I think it's not about an ingredient list. Mm -hmm. It's about trying to live the most compassionate life you can and not okay. being too hard on yourself. Okay. So, like I said, every step is a step in the right direction. And we encourage people to reduce. And if it means one animal at a time, one day at a time, yeah that's fine. It's stepping and moving in the right direction. That's what matters. It matters more to move in the direction than to not move at all. Okay. And there are many websites. We have one called chooseveg.org, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. can help you in that journey. Okay. And there is a lot of information now out there. There are even vegan like menu uh, ordering kind of programs. Right. There are a lot of programs out there yeah. that you can I, I myself use one yeah. and have meals sent to me mm -hmm. and um, they have the vegan options, yeah. which I'm always intrigued by them. Yeah. There's one called Lighter Culture uh -huh. and that is a totally vegan one. There's one by Mark Bittman called, uh, who's a New York Times, um, he would, used to write uh, for, on food uh -huh. and he did one, he does one called Purple Carrot. Yes. And yeah. there's a bunch out there now yeah. that can make it easy to, to help you relearn how to cook and That's to eat. That's the thing. It's about relearning mm -hmm. from the very, very young age. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes mm -hmm. normal every day, just yep. like what we're doing today. Exactly. Right? So let's talk about also what is next mm -hmm. for Mercy for Animals. Yeah, Mercy for Animals has a big mission. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, we want to end the exploitation of farmed animals for food. Mm -hmm. And so our job right now is to create a broad tent that everybody can join us and uh -huh. come under mm -hmm. and begin that process. We're really trying to build our capacity, build the movement, 
so that everybody feels welcome and we get to that mission. The, we will continue to do undercover investigations. We're okay. also working on big pieces of legislation that will ban the cruelest practices in the world. Fantastic. And we're also working directly to influence companies so that their policies either ban the cruelest practices in their, their own food supply chain. Mm -hmm. So that would mean like McDonald's or Burger King only serving cage-free eggs, mm -hmm. but also adding more plant-based options to their right. menus and their supermarket shelves. I just want to say the veggie burger at Burger King is very good. Yes. <laughs> and I know, love it. And at Burger King, they just entered, they're going to be uh, doing the Impossible Burger. Have you oh, yes. heard that? Oh, yes. yeah. They did a big announcement. Yeah. That, oh, that's fantastic. And so they were they were using, I think, a Morningstar Burger, but now they're going to be doing the Impossible Burger, okay. which apparently meat eaters cannot tell the difference between the two. And that's that why they're going I've to be heard. introducing it everywhere. Yeah. Even their, they've said their own preparers and their cooks yeah. are not able to even see the difference between yeah. the two. I wish that we could just start serving that and nobody knows. Yeah. Well, that's the protein revolution I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Is where it becomes, it's, it doesn't have cholesterol in it. Mm -hmm. It's got less fat, mm -hmm. but it tastes just as good. I don't know that people understand this, but your body actually is not made up to digest meat. Yeah. It, your body has to create an enzyme to break it down. Mm -hmm. So for instance, because I have not eaten meat for years, mm -hmm. If I were to now ingest it, it could make me very sick. It will, it will definitely be an unpleasant experience for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we also talk about just going back to the, the animals and the milk and this mm -hmm. and that, that our children, our girls mm -hmm. are starting their cycles earlier. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of health yeah. changes yeah. because of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think generally, you know, trying to eat a whole food plant-based diet, mm -hmm. however much you can. However much you can. Mm -hmm. Start slowly mm -hmm. and maybe in the very end, you will no longer be eating yeah. any animals. Right. So, and I love that the industries are getting on board and the government's getting on board. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this book you okay. have coming out. Yeah. So you said this is coming out in October. September. September. Mm -hmm. Yep. This when is exactly? September 3rd. Okay. Uh, you can look for it on Amazon already and pre-order. It's called Grilled, Turning Adversaries to Allies to Change the Chicken Industry. Okay. And it's really about my journey as an advocate, mm -hmm. where in the beginning, I had a lot of hate in my heart, a lot of anger yeah. for the industry and for factory farmers themselves mm -hmm. until I met one, okay. until I sat down with one. His name's yeah. Craig Watts. And I began to understand how he came to make the choices he made and how he was miserable. And he didn't want to do this farming any more than I wanted him to, but he was trapped in the system. Mm. He was in debt and he couldn't get out of it. Yeah. And so he and I joined forces to expose what was happening. Mm. And it was huge and yeah. it sent ripple effects. And this led me on a journey to realize your so-called opponents, and Abraham Lincoln said this, he said, if, do I not destroy my enemies and making them my friends? Mm. And the objective is mm -hmm. to really find the common ground. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do with these companies is mm -hmm. say, do you want to join us in building that healthy, sustainable, plant-based world? Let's transition. Let's yeah. change your bottom line so yeah. that it doesn't come from slaughtered animals in a dirty slaughterhouse full of food safety issues and right. potential problems and right. undercover investigations. Let's transition to soy or pea protein mm -hmm. or something else where right. you're not at risk of undercover investigations or food safety issues mm -hmm. or harming animals. Yeah. So that's incredible that you worked with someone that actually owns a farming industry, mm -hmm. feels the same way, mm -hmm. but yet stuck because again, it is about money and that was his livelihood mm -hmm. or is his livelihood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. he wanted to stay on the land because he lived in a rural, poor county in North Carolina, mm -hmm. not a lot of employment options. Mm -hmm. And you know, the chicken industry came to town and offered him a contract, which meant taking out a giant loan. And the only way to pay off that loan was to continue to raise chickens. Right. And then he was stuck. Yeah until he paid off that loan. And it just always seemed to be one more thing. This a cycle perpetuates right. itself. And yeah. Yeah. So if someone wants to get involved, yeah. tell us how we can do that. I encourage everyone to go to our website. That's the first place to start, okay. mercyforanimals.org. Uh -huh. And you can donate, you can volunteer. We have 
um, action parties we do online. So wherever you are, if it's your living room in wherever you live, yes. you can participate as long as you have internet. Or you know, there's other ways to get involved through being part of our Hen Heroes, um, which you can find again through our, our volunteering uh, part of our website. Okay. And what about social media? Are you guys present? Huge. Yes. yes, we are big in social media. So check okay. us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're on all the channels. We have beautiful videos that come out every single week that Wonderful. are inspiring and showing solutions mm -hmm. and profiling people that are making a difference in the world. That's incredible. Leah, thank you so much for coming on the show. I wish you continued success. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Well, and good luck with the book. Thank you. Amazing, amazing work. Thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Wake Up With Marcy. What an incredibly powerful show. Remember, your choices do make a difference. Check out wakeupwithmarcy.com for upcoming shows. And remember, be happy and be kind. See you next week. Thank you.